Ahoy hoy my babies, it's your girl T, aka the Nappy Headed Jojoba, with my Gage Girl custom plan review ahead of schedule. I've had myriad requests for me to go ahead and review the custom plan, uh, despite the drama that I uh, have gone through and, and to some point I'm still going through with my review on the Gage Girl Six Week Shred. I anticipate a similar thing may indeed happen again here because guess what? I have cons. So if you happen to be one of the sycophants from Gage Girl who came here to attack me or belittle me or insult me in my comments, be forewarned that I do clap back. And if you come at the queen, you best not miss. Anyone who thinks it's appropriate to attack me for critiquing a product and seeing those critiques of a product as some sort of attack on an individual is fucking on one. I'm not really big on disclaimers, but I know that people tend to think that if you make YouTube videos or if you are on the internet in any sort of public figure capacity, that they have the right to say whatever the fuck they want to because you're putting yourself out there. I think that's absolute nonsense. But most of y'all are cool. I love my subscribers. I feel like this whole ordeal has brought me even closer with my subscribers than I felt before. You guys really do make me feel even stronger and I feel like I carry you guys around in my head and my heart. So thank you all, new and old, who have joined my little nappy-headed family here on YouTube, whether it was before, during, or after the whole drama with my six-week shred review. The Gage Girl Custom Plan. The purchase price of a 30-day Gage Girl Custom Meal Plan is $139.99. It is called a 30-day custom meal plan, but what you get is seven menus, and that's their term over at Gage Girl for basically seven days worth of what you should eat. It's basically a list of food, like here's what you're having for breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks where applicable, post-workout if applicable. Those menus are meant to be batch cooked and used for as many days as you see fit. And the fact that you are getting seven menus rather than 30 days worth of meals laid out for you is stated on the Gage Girl product page for the 30 day custom meal plan. So I did have this information going in prior to purchasing. I thought it was a bit confusing. Now that I've actually gotten my plan, looked through it and even use it, I feel that calling it a 30 day plan is arbitrary at best and misleading at worst. Realistically, you're not going to cycle through each and every one of those seven menus throughout the course of a week because most of us would want to be able to meal prep and just kind of cook once or twice a week rather than having to cook every single day. However, I feel like it should just be marketed as a seven menu meal plan or whatever. Like, I don't know why it would be called 30 days when 30 isn't even a multiple of seven. It is up to you to use some or all of those menus throughout 30 days or any length of time really. I mean, 30 days, as I said, seems very arbitrary to me. It's just seven menus that you can use for as long or as short as you decide. You may recall that someone from Gage Girl actually emailed me and reached out to me asking, you know, uh, asking me to basically hit them up if I had any questions or concerns with my custom plan so they could, you know, kind of accommodate any changes I wanted made. By that point, I was already getting the deluge of comments rude comments on under my review video and I already knew about the duplicitous nature of what had happened with Gage Girl and my first review. Needless to say, uh, by that point I had no interest in, you know, any dealings with them going forward. I was just going to work with what I had on my own. Like I'm not, we're done here. So yeah, I had the audacity to purchase this custom program despite having cons with the six week shred and I did not have a better experience, long story short. I mean, that is it in a nutshell. I thought that perhaps a custom plan would address all the issues that I had with the shred. It did not. A lot of the same issues. In fact, I feel a little bit even more duped in a way, especially considering that when I had questions about the shred, I was told you should have bought a custom plan. A lot of people have sounded off in my comment sections under my Gage Girl related videos, letting me know that they contacted customer service when they had questions or concerns and got no response whatsoever. And that was another reason that I didn't think it was fair that I was being offered this, you know, special service. It was completely a reaction to a less than 100% positive review. And it was basically um, PR. As a matter of fact, I had a less than stellar customer service experience just buying my custom plan. I purchased my custom plan when Gage, when Gage Girl was running a promotion where it was buy one, get one free. And I should disclose that to you guys as well because that means that technically I only paid half price for my custom plan. I paid half of that 140 bucks and my friend who got the other in the BOGO paid, paid me back the other half. 
But um, this was a promotion I learned about through the Gage Girl Instagram page. And uh, after I talked it over with my friend, we decided let's go ahead and do it. There wasn't any indication of any coupon code that needed to be entered on the Instagram post nor on the Gage Girl website. When I went there, I didn't see any special page like here's where the BOGO is or anything like that. So I figured that it must just be automatic. I went ahead, purchased the custom plan and didn't hear anything. I, I got the thanks for your purchase, but I didn't get any additional information about a BOGO or how it all works to get my friend to be able to redeem her meal plan or whatever it was supposed to be. So a few hours go by and I hear nothing. And then I emailed them like, hey, uh, just wondering what's going on with my uh, BOGO plan. I got the whatever for one plan, but I haven't figured out how we, we get the additional one in the buy one, get one free. No response. Now, to be fair, I was getting a little antsy about this one because I could see that the Gage Girl Instagram page was being very, very active while I was emailing and hearing nothing. So it was kind of like, well, I can see that you have internet access, but I'm being ignored and you have my money. And I, I will admit, I probably was a little bit too quick to be like, look, like, do I need to contact my credit card company? No one is responding to me, but I think even an automated response acknowledging that I sent an email would be nice. Like you don't need a person to do that. Computers can do that for you. Just saying we'll get back to you in 24 to 72 hours, something so that I could have a kind of timeline for how long it's supposed to take. But I was hearing nothing. And eventually they explained that apparently there was some special link in the Instagram bio for the Gage Girl page that you were supposed to click to redeem this offer. It didn't say that NTWare in the uh, the image for this promotion, nor did it say it in the caption explaining the promotion. There was It didn't even say hashtag link in bio, nothing. So how people were supposed to know that, I do not know. And then I remember when I was just like, why is no one responding to me? I kept seeing a lot of other people having the same complaint, like I purchased, but I haven't received my code, what's the deal? And ultimately I think it was just a lot of people didn't realize that there was a special link in the bio for the Gage Girl page because it never fucking said that anywhere. I had planned to link to the Instagram posts on the Gage Girl page to show you guys that there is no language in here about there being a special link in the bio, but those posts have mysteriously disappeared from the timeline but I had actually screenshotted them when I was going through this whole fiasco because I was just like, am I going to need receipts to prove that this promotion was running when I, you know, file a dispute with my credit card company? So I screenshotted the images because I just thought that I might need evidence if I did in fact have to file a dispute for a non-receipt a product. Here you can plainly see no mention whatsoever of where you were supposed to find this magical link and you can understand, therefore, my confusion during my purchase experience. I will cop to probably overreacting and being a bit too quick with my trigger finger, but when someone's fucking with my money, I don't wait. So that was a really negative experience even prior to receiving my, my custom plan and ultimately got it all worked out. I got my plan, my friend got her plan, both of us were disappointed with what we received. Over the course of this week, which is my first and last week using this program, I used only two of the menus. And for one of the days this week, I actually used one of the menus from the Gage Girl six week shred, the fish tacos day, which my ride or dies may remember was the best day. And I did a little vloggity type of footage for y'all, but let's just walk through what I ate. The first menu I used had breakfast was two eggs, six ounces of cherry tomatoes, half a teaspoon of olive oil and an ounce of spinach and says to whisk together eggs and scramble or cook as an omelet, serve over a bed of spinach and sliced cherry tomatoes. I didn't do that. I basically just made it all into a big scramble because that made the most sense to me. Six ounces of cherry tomatoes is quite a lot of cherry tomatoes. So I did my best to just slice them all in half, saute those in the pan with spinach. And instead of olive oil, I swapped that out for duck fat. The reason I do that is she suggests cooking in olive oil pretty frequently throughout this and throughout the six week shred. Olive oil has a very low smoking point and once an oil is actually smoking in the pan, it's becoming carcinogenic. At least this is according to some studies that I read many, many years ago, which was when I stopped cooking with olive oil. I'll use it cold. I'll use it to like drizzle on something or as a, you know, to make a quick vinaigrette or whatever, but I do not 
heat olive oil in skillets, but I will sometimes use ghee or other oils or fats that have a high smoking point so that I feel like they're more safe for me to cook with them. My post-workout that day was Vital Collagen Peptide Proteins in Water. I don't use the Vital brand. I mean, I like the Vital brand. I think it is the best, but I use a brand that's a little bit less expensive that gets the job done for me. I've talked about it before. I will also link it in the description box if you want to check it out. According to my menu, that was to be mixed just in six ounces of water but I noticed that I had a snack of a six ounce banana listed for later in the day. Just to make my post-workout a little bit more palatable and more tasty for myself, I decided to combine that banana into the collagen and water mix. I used frozen bananas to kind of make it thicker, make it nice and cold and make it a little bit more like a mini smoothie type of situation. So after my workout that day, I blended six ounces of frozen banana with water, the collagen peptides, and a little bit of cinnamon. It's just way more palatable than drinking plain peptides and water, I will say that. Lunch that day was six ounces of chicken bread two teaspoons of olive oil, eight ounces of bell pepper, six ounces of pineapple, and two ounces of avocado. I am not a fan of cooked pineapple, so this is what you have to do with any of these plans, whether it's one of the shreds or you get a custom plan, is you really have to tweak things to what you prefer because the plan is telling me to go ahead and cook pineapple. I loathe cooked pineapple. I love pineapple. I don't want it cooked. People who eat pineapple on pizza need to be executed. It's an abomination. Instead, I had pineapple as my side and I went ahead and just sauteed the peppers themselves in, again, duck fat. I had batch cooked a bunch of chicken breasts just on my grill pan the day before. So I just cut up six ounces worth into nice sized bites with my meat shears. Once the peppers were pretty much done, I dumped in the chicken just to warm it through because they'd been cooked previously and were in my refrigerator. Stir it up add the avocado, hot sauce, of course, always critical, and that was lunch. Dinner for this menu was pretty much identical. The only difference was it said eight ounces of chicken breast over the six that I had at lunch. Everything else was exactly the same, except for the directions, which said uh, cooked chicken, saute bell peppers, pineapple, and riced cauliflower in olive oil. If you've already seen my Gage Girl Six Week Shred review, you know that I used to love cauliflower. I used to love rice cauliflower. Don't think I can ever eat it again though. And I was pretty explicit about leaving it out of my meal plan and it isn't listed in any of the actual menus, but the failure to remove it from the notes, the cooking section on the side here, uh, pretty much says to me what I suspected, which is that this plan isn't necessarily as customized as I had expected it to be. Look, I don't expect them to start from scratch every time someone sends in their questionnaire after purchasing a custom plan and to just start from a blank, you know, a blank slate every time. However, hide your tracks a little better. Don't make it so obvious that you're kind of copy pasting from a template. Another issue was with this particular menu, it specifies eight ounces of bell peppers at both lunch and dinner, but when I looked at the calories and the num the grams of carbs, it didn't seem right to me. And I double checked what the actual calories and uh, carb grams were for eight ounces of bell peppers on both Calorie King and my Fitness Pal. And both of them indicated that eight ounces is way too much for the amount of calories and carbs indicated in my plan. In fact, it should be about half that. It would be between four and five ounces to get the number of calories and carbs listed here. So I suspect that that eight ounces of bell peppers was probably like bell peppers and cauliflower and someone didn't double check their math before sending me my plan. Since dinner was identical to lunch on this menu, save for the fact that you get two ounces more of chicken, I swapped out the pineapple at dinner for mango just to give myself a little bit more variety. Let me quickly run you through the other menu that I've been using this week. Two whole eggs for breakfast with four ounces of sweet potatoes, four ounces of Brussels sprouts, one and a half teaspoons of olive oil. This is called a sweet potato and Brussels scramble. You're meant to dice the sweet potatoes and Brussels sprouts and saute with olive oil and seasonings of choice, then scramble eggs into the skillet. Again, I didn't do that. I also didn't have any sweet potatoes in the house. I did have some red potatoes, so I swapped those in. The macros on sweet potatoes and red potatoes are fairly similar, so it was a pretty easy swap for me to make. And again, instead of the one and a half teaspoon of olive oil, I swapped that out and used duck fat instead. 
the macros profile for duck fat is not identical to what olive oil has. So I did have to make a minor adjustment there. So what I did was I just chopped up the Brussels sprout into quarters because they were quite large, the sprouts that I had. And uh, I just uh, diced up my potatoes fairly small and I just sauteed those in the duck fat. And then I actually poached my eggs on the side instead because I love a poached egg. Lunch on this day was, guess what? Boneless, skinless chicken breast again, along with four ounces of sweet potatoes and two strips of bacon and the instructions were chicken with bacon potato skillet grilled chicken using seasonings of choice cook two slices of bacon and set aside dice sweet potatoes and cook in bacon grease season with black pepper and sea salt crumble bacon into cooked potato mix serve alongside chicken i did not serve the chicken on the side once again i just used my uh kitchen shears to chop up the chicken and i just made it into kind of like a bacon stir fry kind of situation dinner that day was four ounces of salmon six ounces of sweet potatoes and again two strips of bacon basically you cook it the same way as instructed at lunch and serve it alongside salmon instead of chicken this time i swapped out a good amount of the potatoes if not most of them and the rest i did uh peppers in this day the only time you're eating any vegetables are when you're eating the brussels sprouts at breakfast that's your only vegetable in the entire day even though those meals in that menu with just like basically meat and potatoes and bacon are delicious. I don't feel super responsible eating them. So it's an easy fix to add in peppers and stuff, but I feel like if this were truly done thoughtfully, it would have been a more balanced meal to begin with. You feel what I'm saying? That day's snack was six ounces of chopped apples. I didn't have any apples, so I swapped in mango instead and an ounce of raw almonds. And my post-workout was again, just two scoops of my collagen peptides in water. That day I did not have a banana to add to them listed in the menu, so I did not. So that was the other menu I've been using this week. A lot of these are basically the same thing over and over. Like here's another one, menu four. Six ounces of boneless, skinless chicken breast. Four ounces of boneless, skinless chicken breast at dinner. Sweet potatoes, Brussels sprouts olive oil. I mean, it's basically the same exact thing as the first one. And then there are some days that include recipes from just random websites. Uh, one of them has one and a half servings of jalapeno popper chicken chili from Skinny Taste. I don't know what Skinny Taste is. I did click through and I saw that they did have um, the nutritional info listed at the bottom of their recipe for this chicken chili. But whenever you're using recipes from random websites, you kind of have to wonder how well vetted that nutritional information is and considering whoever put my plan together apparently didn't even vet their own measurements considering the error with how much peppers or whatever I was supposed to use in the first menu. Like they're not even fact checking their own stuff. So I'm not really too confident that they've fact checked the nutritional information for a recipe from some rando that they're telling me to eat as part of my custom meal plan. A lot of my cons with the program are shared with the cons that I had in my review of the six week shred. It's just too repetitive. It's a lot of the same meals for lunch and dinner. I think it's the same meal for lunch and dinner on every single day except one. And I feel like they only changed that dinner protein from chicken breast to salmon because they'd already done chicken breast at lunch and dinner on two of my other seven days. I think it would still be a better approach to do a different meal for lunch and dinner just to avoid getting bored of the same things since you're going to be eating them over the course of three, four, maybe even five days. Let's get into why I'm quitting this after only a week. The calories are too low. Before you receive your Gage Girl 30 day custom meal plan, you fill out a fairly lengthy questionnaire, which I question why since it seems like not much of it matters. Within my questionnaire, I shared the following information, which I've shared with you guys on this channel a handful of times. I have had my resting metabolic rate tested and it was around 1,450 calories per day. It was slightly higher because I went back and actually checked my documentation from the facility afterward. It's between 1,450 and 1,500. Since I need that many calories just to lie in bed all day, I need to be sure my plan has enough, has enough calories when taking my daily activities and workout into account. Following my RMR test, I was advised to eat at least 1,800 calories per day. So that's what I sent them. I'm now going to read you the calorie counts for my seven menus. Day one, 1,483 calories. Day two, 1,359 calories. Day three, 1,480 calories. Day four, 1,485 calories. Day five, 1,499 calories, ooh, cheat day. Day six, 1,446 calories. And day seven, 
1473 calories. Now this is a custom plan where the customer specified a request that appears to have been ignored completely. I wondered if perhaps based on my stats, you know, my weight, the frequency with which I work out, which I think is moderately high, I thought perhaps they just knew better than I did. You know what I mean? Like I'm not a nutritionist, I'm not a dietitian, but I do know my own data because I've had it tested. And I've also gotten advice from other people trained in this field. This is why it took me so long to even try to do this program because I was just like, these calories are gonna be too low for me. They're around the same calorie amount that you get in weeks three and four of the Gage Girl Six Week Paleo Shred, which was when my performance in the gym starts noticeably suffer, as well as my overall energy levels and feelings of well being. So once I received the custom plan and saw those calorie counts, knowing full well that I had requested quite a bit more food each day. And knowing that I was fairly justified in that request to see that it was patently ignored was vexing. Yesterday was my fifth day on my custom plan and uh, this is gonna be the only week I'm doing this. The calories are just too low. I essentially can't use this. I didn't think I was going to be able to work out even though I had had a rest day the day before. But caffeine did come through for me in the clutch. I was able to get through my workout. Throughout this week, I definitely noticed my energy declining a little bit more and a little bit more each day. I thought perhaps I should defer to this program and maybe I could just kind of stick it out, white knuckle it for 30 days on lower calories, but I'm just not about that. Even stranger than the complete failure to pay attention to my request for 1800 calories or so, um, in the email that comes with my comes with the plan when they send it to you, um, you know, it's a, it's a form email, but uh, it says in order to accomplish, you know, fat loss, you need to consume a minimum of one gram of protein per gram of body weight. Not one of my menus in my custom plan includes enough protein for that. All of them are far below, and I'm not about to tell y'all what I weigh. But it's a lot. Yo, girl, kind of, uh, you know, she's muscular. None of my menus had one gram of protein per pound of body weight because that's on your intake questionnaire. You know, they ask you your height, your weight, your age, all that kind of stuff. So I just thought that that was odd. It's just like y'all aren't even following your own advice. You know, I didn't dislike the meals that I had. I just found them to be repetitive and not enough. If anything, this has finally inspired me to do what I should have done in the first place and just do it my damn self. Going forward throughout the rest of our Project Beast Mode Reload, my plan is to say, fuck all this noise. I'm gonna do my own macros. That old cliche, if you want something done, you gotta do it yourself. Turns out it's true. So I made myself a super simple, straightforward, uh, macros grid in Google Sheets and I just put in the formula so it'll add everything up for me as I go through throughout the day and add in the foods that I'm eating. And uh, I'm just gonna use that after and even before Japan throughout the rest of beast mode. I'm gonna be working my ass off. I'm gonna work hard. I'm gonna lift heavy and I'm gonna eat enough. After Japan, and tracking for three to six weeks to make sure I kind of understand what my macros look like. I'm going to transition into eating more intuitively, which is basically what I've been doing since the six week shred and which seems to have been working for me because I'm actually leaner than I was when I finished that program. I continue to get leaner just by eating kind of what I felt like. So once I have a better handle on what that looks like, I'll try to put a video of a what I ate today style video for you guys with that as well. And one of these days, once I'm actually doing them again, I'll show you guys what a cheat day looks like. I know that I am allowing one cheat meal after three weeks of beast mode, which I think, I think after this week, we'll actually have three weeks down. Am I wrong? I'm not sure. So that would be one cheat meal, not cheat day per week. But you know, once I'm not, once I'm in maintenance essentially, and I'm really just focusing on performance and hitting certain goals in terms of things I can do because I'm much less focused on hitting a certain weight and things these days as I get closer and closer. My motivation is coming from things that I want to be able to do. Once I'm in that kind of phase of my nutrition and training, I will be having full on cheat days once a week. And I would love to kind of bring you guys along with me for one of those to show you guys like what I cheat, what I cheat with, what I do when it's a cheat day. Workouts this week, as I mentioned earlier, as well as in my previous video, have been all Peach Plan 2 thus far. Let me give you guys some initial impressions, and I also filmed some of my workout yesterday. 
the struggle one where I needed the coffee. Excuse the raggedy dookie twists that you see in my hair in these workout clips. This was the day after wash day. So my hair was in those twists after I finished washing and I had not done anything about them yet. And as a matter of fact, I still haven't done anything about those twists. They're right here under this hair hat. I'm not one of those chicks who's worried about looking cute when I'm trying to work out, especially when I'm working out at home. My initial impression is that it seems like a pretty straightforward program in terms of a lot of the movements, particularly in phase one. But I think that's actually a good thing because what it does is it allows you to really dial in on your form and make sure that that is correct before you move into the somewhat less traditional movements in phase two. And I believe I even read something about that in her explanation in the guide that that's sort of her intention is to focus on getting your form right for phase one and then we get a little bit crazier in phase two but even there it's still pretty traditional gym style upper body and you know lower body workouts so far all of the workouts in phase one have consisted of five different exercises that you do for three to four sets in phase two the workouts get a little bit longer and more involved Yesterday was a leg day workout and I'm in phase one. The peach plan two has two phases. Phase one, it is suggested you use for about three weeks and then you do the phase two workouts for about five weeks for eight weeks total. Phase one is eight workouts and there are four upper body and four lower body. And phase two, I believe is nine workouts with five lower body and four upper body. There are also some glute activation movements she includes, which you would do after your warm up, but before you start a leg day workout, as well as some glute finisher type circuits that you can tack on to the end of a workout, especially on a leg day, and some cardio high intensity interval training or HIIT circuits. So there's a handful of those, I think about four of each. I have not dipped into either of those yet, the HIIT circuits or the, the glute finishers, mainly because my energy's been too low to do anything beyond the workouts themselves this week. Since I didn't have the energy to do any of her booty finishers, I decided on both of the leg days this week so far to just do some pistol squats at the end. I just got my pistols pretty recently and it's a skill that I want to not only maintain but continue to work on and get better at doing. I still struggle with balance a bit as you can see. I struggle with balance in general but I definitely want to continue to hone that skill and get better and better at my pistols. So I just did uh, I think three sets of five on each leg at the end of this workout as a bit of a little, you know, leg and glute finisher for myself. Truthfully, this is not my favorite way to work out. It's actually my least favorite way to work out. That's a large part of why I got into CrossFit years ago. Is I'm not a super huge fan of three sets of X reps or this many sets of that many reps or whatever, whatever it is. It's just a little too boring for me. However, I have found that I've gotten a little, little, little bit of leg soreness, which is always a good thing. I feel like if I'm not sore, this shit ain't working. And I haven't gotten sore in probably weeks. So I like that. And I like that the simplicity of this, the fact that you're just doing back squats, uh, deadlifts, lunges, things like that, it kind of forces you to not only dial in your form, but it also forces you to lift heavier so that it keeps things interesting. As far as adapting it for home use, I've been kind of playing it by ear as I go along and it's been very doable. However, I say that with the caveat that I've got more home exercise equipment than any sane person would have. <laughs> I was a home exerciser for many, many, many years exclusively on and off. So I've got a ton of equipment, but the average person isn't going to have a squat rack, let alone a makeshift squat rack or even a barbell. I can certainly get through phase one without a gym membership. I think I'm going to have to get a lot more creative with uh, tweaking some of the movements in phase two where she really is relying on a lot of equipment that is hard to duplicate. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it and we'll see how my booty is looking. I did take a little bit of video uh, just as my before video, but I don't know if it's ever gonna see the light of day because I'm not interested in putting my entire ass on the internet. I was just wearing a swimsuit, but even that makes me feel a little so I don't know, it may never see the light of day. It may be more for me to actually be able to do a bit of a side-by-side -side of my before and after, and I'll just have to describe it to you. Generally speaking, it feels good to just get back to basics and lift heavy. And uh, as far as the workouts being a little bit on the boring side, Anderson Pack will get me through it, so I think we'll be all right. 
So that's it. That's a bit of a two-in-one for you guys. A little bit of what my workouts were like this week, what my food was like this week, as well as my review of my Gage Girl custom plan and my initial impressions of the Peach Plan 2. Let me know how you are faring if you are participating in the Project Beast Mode Reload. And I hope that when I uh, kind of show you guys how I'm figuring out my macros on my own and all that stuff, I hope that winds up being helpful in some way to someone because uh, I should have just done this in the first place. That is it for me today. I'm gonna go ahead and get this video edited so I can try to get it up today, which is Friday, because tomorrow uh, I'm kind of busy. I'm doing stand-up for the first time in many years. My friend organized this pop-up show and she asked me to perform, so I kinda wanna be able to get my mind right before that because it's been a while. I hope you guys had a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. That's a, that's a nappy-headed hose there, I'm gonna tell you that now. <laughs>